right. So it looks like we have close to 100 participants already. Uh, we'll get underway. Uh, it gives me a great pleasure today to uh, to uh, to introduce Dr. Uh, uh, Debra Adi, who's who will be talking about uh, immunosuppressive management of the kidney transplant recipients. Dr. Deb Adi, I'm a transplant nephrologist here at UCSF, and I'm happy to speak about the management of immunosuppression in renal transplant patients. We take care of a few thousand patients, um, and we try to do this collaboratively as much as possible with our referring nephrologists um, or internists for those patients that don't have a, a tie to a nephrologist. So I feel pretty passionate about this. So what I'm gonna do is go through immunosuppression. Uh, I'll be talking as I go through the different classes, the side effects um, and problems. And then towards the end, I'm gonna uh, deal with some special situations. So I do have some um, disclosures, board activities. I am on the ABIM uh, Nephrology Governance Board, which means I cannot uh, participate in act, uh, activities aimed at passing the board. So that's not what this is about. So I can do this. Um, I'm on a few AST committees and, and KF Education Committee um, and have a little bit of research support, um, but I have nothing that is a conflict of interest for this talk. So we're going to talk about the basic mechanisms underlying transplant immunology. We're going to describe the targets for the different immunosuppressive agents. Uh, I want to identify side effects and risks of immunosuppressive agents and pretend, potential interventions and alternatives. And uh, there should be time for questions at the end um, if you have any. So the thing to know is that the immune system, we need it, obviously. The desired effects of the immune system um, are defense against bacteria, viruses, fungi, uh, surveillance for early malignancy, and distinguishing between self and non-self. Non but the undesired effects of the immune system is when the immune system loses self, such as in lupus or other autoimmune diseases, hypersensitivity reactions, and in my world, when the immune system wants to reject tissue that's been transplanted. So we spend a lot of time trying to avoid that. So the uh, aspects of the immune system are the initial barrier threats, which are the skin and the mucous membranes. And as we all learned long ago in medical school, uh, those are the first barriers to infection. Then there's a humoral antibody uh, mediated response induced by vaccines or exposure, um, results from specific lymphocyte B cell activation. And then there's cell mediated um, aspects, which again are vaccines induced active against viruses, fungi, and malignancy. And I want, to, want you to keep in mind that the cell mediated aspect, which is really what we target with our immunosuppressive ag suppressive agents, is why we see the problems we do, which are a lot of viral infections, uh, sometimes fungal infections, depending on where someone lives, as well as malignancy. And this is primarily the system that's responsible for rejection of foreign tissue, at least early on. Later on, which I'm really not gonna speak about that because that's a whole talk in itself, is antibody-mediated rejection of, of transplant. But our immunosuppressive agents really are focused at blocking the cell-mediated aspect of the immune system. So when we block the immune system, we have to think about both class one and class two uh, major histocompatibility complexes. And there's class one, which is HLA, A, B, and C, class two, which is uh, DR, DP, DQ. And the class one is almost on all nucleated tissue, which is why it's such a problem for us because transplanted tissue has a lot of nucleated cells. But the class two system has the B cell, macrophages and dendritic cells, which are the antigen presenting cells, and they can enhance the immune response. Uh, class one looks at clearance of endogenous ant antigens, whereas the class two is clearance of exogenous antigens. And the T cell interactions with class one uh, interacts with the cytotoxic T cells, also called CD8 cells or killer T cells, whereas class two is more with the T helper cells or TH cells, also called CD4. So again, class one is on most somatic cells, low level in endocrine tissue, myocardium and skeletal muscle, not detected on exposed surface of villus uh, trophoblast, which is why pregnancies can typically be carried uh, without immune intervention. Uh, CNS neurons, which makes treating brain tumors a little bit more challenging, uh, corneal epithelium, exocrine pancreas, uh, increased expression by interferons, uh, cytokines, and lymphokines. Class two 
It's present on the surface of B lymphocytes, monocytes, macrophages, again, all those antigen presenting cells. On some vascular endothelium, which all transplanted tissue has va vascular endothelium, gut epithelium, dermal fibroblasts, melanocytes, astrocytes, um, and induced.